Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The word of the Lord, Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 23. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, say to her, You are a land that is not cleansed or rained on in the day of indignation. The conspiracy of her prophets in her midst is like a roaring lion tearing the prey. They have devoured people. They have taken treasure and precious things. They have made many widows in her midst. Her priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things. They have not distinguished between the holy and unholy, nor have they made known the difference between the clean and the unclean. And they have hidden their eyes from my Sabbaths, so that I am profaned among them. Her princes in her midst are like wolves, tearing the prey to shed blood, to destroy people, and to get dishonest gain. Her prophets plastered them with untempered mortar, seeing false visions and divining lies for them, saying, Thus saith the Lord, when the Lord has not spoken. The people of the land have used oppressions, committed robbery, and mistreated the poor and the needy, and they wrongfully oppressed the stranger. So I sought for a man among yes, them. Yes, yes. One who would make up a gap yes, yes. or a wall. Yes, yes. Stand in the gap before me yes. on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. Therefore, I have poured up my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the wrath of my fire of my wrath, and I have recompensed their deeds on their own heads, saith the Lord God. Amen. You can be seated. God, say, God, is it me you're looking for? Oh, come on. Lift your hands up, lift your eyes up to the heavens. Say, Lord, is it me? You're looking, for. you're looking for God is looking for someone this morning Amen. to stand in the gap by praying for this perverse generation yes. as he did in Ezekiel's day so that he will change his mind and his intentions yep. of bringing judgment on the land yep. Lord, in the name of Jesus. God is looking for an intercessor an intercessor has the power and authority to reroute demons and devils, overthrow, overturn verdicts and decrees, because nothing happens till somebody prays. Amen. Until somebody prays, there will be no change. Amen. Until somebody prays, there will be no desire. Amen. Until somebody prays, there will be no results. Amen. There are many. In the last days, the Bible says, whose hearts have waxed cold. Yeah. They have had no conscience. Yeah. Their consciences have been seared. Yeah. And even among the body of Christ, yeah. they are also there. Yeah. Nothing moves them. Yeah. Nothing convicts them. Yeah. Because uh, they don't even realize uh, yeah. that they have given over themselves uh, to seducing spirits yeah. and doctrines of the devil. Amen. But in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. the intercessor, Hallelujah. the watchman on the tower, the prayer warrior can change and reroute and overturn and cast down every plan of the enemy. There are many who are being sought by God today. Come on now. As he did when he looked for and found a man. Yeah. In Abraham, he found a man. Yes, he, he found an intercessor in Noah. He found in, in Moses and in Daniel. Yeah. He found it in Esther and in Hannah. He found it in Jeremiah and in Samuel. Yeah. I want to know this morning, can your name be added to these intercessors? Can your name be added among the intercessors of our time? And even those who have gone before us, and yet for those who will still come behind us. Come on, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 
Jeremiah said in Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 1. Oh, that my eyes were a fountain of tears so that I could weep day and night for the sins and the slain of my people. Oh, that my eyes were a fountain of tears. A fountain was like a, a reservoir. A reservoir which held a lot of water. And what Jeremiah was saying, I have run out of crying. And I wish my eyes were like a reservoir that could hold tears so I could keep crying some more. Jeremiah's eyes have run out of tears. And some of you here this morning can identify with Jeremiah because you cried and you prayed and you cried and you prayed and you cried and you prayed and you, prayed and you ran out of tears. Come on. But here in Ezekiel chapter 22, God was looking for someone. Yep. He wanted to find someone whose heart yep. whose heart would be broken with the things that break his. Uh -huh. Amen. He was searching himself. Why did he not send angels on a search party? Angels, the Bible tells us, are ministering spirits sent to help the ear of salvation, which is us. Yep. In Hebrews chapter 114. They have no power to avert judgment or answer prayer. Angels are, are here to serve and assist the believer. So when God goes looking for an intercessor, he goes himself. Amen. My Amen. God does this search himself. Say, God, God. Is, it me you're looking for? is it me you're looking for? He is a righteous judge and God must judge sin. Yep. Even sometimes when my children do wrong and I tell them to apologize and they come and they say, I'm sorry, mommy. And they think that saying sorry means they don't have to live with the consequences of what they have done. Yeah. And I'm always telling them, I hear you. I hear you say sorry, but that doesn't excuse that I'm not going to punish you. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Oh, Lord, have mercy. Amen. Some of us are so quick to say sorry, yeah. not because we have Repented, yeah. but because we don't want to get in trouble or deal with the consequences of our sin. And so that is why we will go back and repeat the same thing again. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. God does the search himself because he is a righteous judge. And he must judge sin. Yep. We have to be done with sweeping sin under the rug Amen. and excusing people's behavior that is sinful as if they can't do any better. Yep. Amen. Amen. That was free. Hallelujah. So there was a divine indictment that was passed down in Ezekiel chapter 22. And I'm going to touch on it briefly, and then I'm going to come back to it. There was an indictment passed down to the priest in verse 26. There was an indictment passed down to the prince that was the political leader of the day in verse 27. There was an indictment on the prophet who was a false prophet saying what God didn't say in verse 28. There was an indictment passed down on the people, the local people, because they were thieves and robbers. So there was no area or, or type of people in the land that were not uh, uh, were, were, that were left out. So it didn't matter the position that they held. God was passing down an indictment, a sovereign indictment. It means uh, that they were guilty of their sin, but they had not repented either. Hallelujah. Some of the things they were guilty of in this generation. And this is a Ezekiel generation. But I want to submit to you this morning that nothing has changed in this generation. That some of the things that they have been guilty of, we are still guilty of today. Yeah. Reading from verse 1 onward. They were guilty of despising their parents. The Bible tells us to 
honor our father and our mother so that we can have long life on the land. Some of you have already put a sneer over your mouth because of the things you said against your parents. They don't have to have been a good parent. They don't have to be a saint parent. The Bible calls us to honor them. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Some of us have lived with some parents that back talking was not heard of in our day. You just open your mouth to say, eh, and you may end up with no teeth. I'm not talking to anybody in the house. But the parents, the children of our day, they, they, they back answer. They, they, they have every smart remark and they disregard their parents' authority in their lives. Oh, hell have mercy. So when they were despising the parents and the, um, and the holy things of God, hallelujah, you ever hear kids say, well, let me make my own mistake. You made yours, let me make my own mistake. Why? Because they're despising the correction, the encouragement from the parents. What are you doing? You are despising the parents' authority that's trying to lead you and guide you in a straight path so that you don't make our same mistakes. Because we've lived with the consequences, haven't we? Come on, come on, speak the truth. We've lived with our consequences. But we despise our parents and those who are in authority over us. Yes, we do. They have allowed corruption to spread. Another thing is that they oppress the orphans and the fatherless and the widows. And the third thing they did, hallelujah, which is the same that's going on in our land today. Hallelujah, there were so many sexual sins and unholy things. Oh, come on, somebody. Nobody's putting the flesh under subjection anymore. Oh, yes, sir. If it feels good, do it. Hallelujah, come on. I used to wonder as a teenager why I even had a sexual desire. If God put it in me, how did he expect me to control it? Yeah. Come on, some of you say the same thing. Say the same. Come on. Even come now. on now. Even now. Hey. Come on. Come on. Yes, and it doesn't matter whether you're single or you're married. Yes, Jesus. You're my, you're my, 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 yes. You still need to put your flesh. Come on. Under subjection. How do you do that? By staying in the word. Are you hearing me this morning? Come on. It's not everything I call summer is going to solve. Amen. 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 That's true. That's true. Come on, you're going to call short. Come on, you're still feeling hot. Yes. Yes. Am I talking to anybody up in yes, here? Jesus. Come on, but the word of God, the spirit of the living God, knows how to perform and provide and remind you that you are going against the law of Christ. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, have mercy. That's free too. Another thing that we're doing was taking bribes. Come on, if they, if you could, if, if I pay you, you'll let me go through. If you could do this for me and put me at the head of the, come on, and we pay off somebody to get the paper and the loan. Come on, somebody. Am I talking to anybody? And we're taking bribes in verse 13, 12 and 13. And then another thing they were doing in Ezekiel's day. Hallelujah. The priests were neglecting the word of God. Hallelujah. Let me just go back to the taking bribes thing. Because last year we had a lot of celebrity that were caught in taking bribes to get their children into Ivy League schools. Yes, 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 yes. And they have done it years before, but the consequences of their sin caught up with them and they ended up serving time. Yep. Am I talking to anybody? And it's still happening today. Hallelujah. And then the priests were neglecting the word of God. They were dishonoring God. They weren't really sticking to the word. They were giving people the things that had they people who had itching ears and making them feel good. Everybody was giving out a feel good message and a feel good hallelujah word. There was nothing that was being preached that would bring conviction. Why? Because the priests were also sinning against God. In Ezekiel's day, there were false prophets uh, saying they had vision, saying they had a dream, uh, and telling the people, just said the Lord, uh, when God did not say. Yeah. They were telling lies on God. Yeah. Come on, those of you who always like to run after prophecy, come on, you better be careful. Because you're running after prophecy, but you're not even living the life God has called you to live. Hallelujah. And you're giving people your money for a word. Come on. You're giving all your money because the prophets were profiteering. My God, have mercy. Help me, Holy Ghost. I said the prophets were profiteering off of your money because they gave you a false word. Come on. Hallelujah. This was happening in the details then. Is it any different from now? My God, have mercy. In Ezekiel's day, 
and our Lord were thieves and oppressors. Verse 29, and we get back to there in a little while. You see, there is sin and wickedness in every generation. Hallelujah. In the same the generations, but there are different types and modes or, or degrees of that sin. But guess what? Sin is sin. I said sin is sin. Black is black and white is white. Hallelujah. Holy is holy and unholy is unholy. Sin is sin. Can you hear me this morning? Hallelujah. So in every generation, God is always looking for a restorer. My God. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. In every generation, there is a restorer designated for gener their generation. Psalm 46 says, this is the generation that seek your face. Oh, Jacob, church, we are the generation. And God is looking for somebody in this generation. God is looking for somebody in your family. God is looking for somebody in your community. God is looking for somebody in the plants. God is looking for somebody in New York State. God is looking for somebody in the United States of America in this generation. He's not looking for popular people. Hallelujah. He's not looking for sophisticated people. Hallelujah. He's not looking for educated people. Are you hearing me this morning? He's not looking for rich people. He doesn't care what brand name you wear or if you weave it or natural it. Come on. He doesn't care. Come on. Hallelujah. Whether you can speak. Hallelujah. And maintain the modern English. English. Hallelujah. If you speak Patois, if you speak, come on, Haitian, if you speak Creole, if you speak Spanish, God is looking for somebody who is living righteous and holy that he can connect with, that he can agree with. I know you were all getting happy last week when we were called to here, but this is the message for today. Are you hearing me this morning? So even though there was a sovereign divine indictment, you know what an indictment is? When the court passed a law or ruling against the person who was found guilty or suspected of something, Hallelujah. Well, God found uh, the people of Israel guilty and he passed down an indictment. Uh, but thank God, he also had uh, a divine inquiry. He said, I sought for a man. Uh, I came looking for somebody. Hallelujah. Notice that the Bible says uh, that he wasn't looking for some men. Uh, come on, somebody. He wasn't looking for five or, or for ten or for an army of men, but he was looking for a man, just just one person, just one person. Why? Because God doesn't take all. He doesn't need all the hundreds and the three hundreds and the thousands of thousands to get what he wants to do in the earth. Donna. He just needs one. Oh, God. One. One somebody in your family. Want somebody in your community. Want somebody in your church. Want somebody on the job. My God, he just needs one man. One man. One man. One man. Say, God, God. Is it me you're looking for? Is it me you're looking for? Just one. What did he need? He needed them to stand in the gap. Because the sin was in the land and he was about to pass judgment. But if that one man, my yellow shine, could pray the situation out, uh, could pray the people through, uh, my God, have mercy, my God, hallelujah. If there was just one man who would intercede and say, God, hold up. Uh, if there was just one person, one individual who said, mercy, Lord, mercy. Yeah, for one man. It took only one man come on to bring sin into the world. Uh, but it also took one man to restore all things. Uh, come on, the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, uh, Christ died for us. One man. The first Adam came, brought sin. The second Adam came and brought life. Hallelujah. It took one man on the cross. Uh, one man dying for the sins of the world to restore us back into right relationship with God. Even when he asked the question,
in the heaven said, Who shall I send and who will go for us? So Jesus, the Son of God, spoke up and said, I will go in the volume of the book. It is written of me. There are some ordinances, there are some things that God has written about your life. Mareko Sandoro Moshe, Mario Kosai. And some of us have been going against the word written plan of God for our lives. But God is looking for somebody to stand in the gap for you. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, have mercy. Jesus was looking for a man, hallelujah, not just any man. He wasn't looking for a titled man or a performer. Come on. He wasn't looking for the gifted and the talented. Hallelujah. He wasn't even looking for the pastor. Come on. Everybody would want to say, well, let the pastor and the evangelist and the teacher and the apostle. Come on. Hallelujah. The Bible says he was just looking for a man. He wasn't looking for the deacon or the usher or a missionary. He wasn't looking for the king or a queen. He wasn't he was looking for a prayer warrior. Hallelujah. He was looking for a prayer enforcement agency. He was looking for someone who knew how to go undercover and touch the throne room of God. Oh, the only qualification of this person was that they would be willing, somebody say willing, willing to stand in the gap. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He was looking. Oh, and he's still looking for somebody who would know and understand his heart. Yes, Lord. The Bible says he is not willing for any to perish. Not willing. But that all would come to repentance. What a good job. He was looking for somebody to stand between righteousness and unrighteousness. Come here, Sister Sandra. Come here, Sister Jones. Come quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Righteousness. Unrighteousness. In between was what God had to decide to do. Am I going to destroy? Or can somebody fill in the gap and avert my judgment? In other words, even the intercessor has the power and the authority to change God's mind concerning you. And if, if he could find somebody to stand in the gap, come on. See, this is what would happen. There would be no way. Yes. He would pass down the judgment that he wanted to pass down. Because there was somebody who was interceding for the unholy to become holy. For the unrighteous to become righteous. For the unsaved to become saved. For the unredeemed to be Oh, 
who will intervene for mercy. God is a merciful God. We can't just take it for granted. God is merciful. But God needs your permission to intervene with his mercy for somebody who's going down the wrong road. But, but, but how, how can you give him permission when you need mercy yourself? That is why he was looking for somebody. Hallelujah. The Bible says he looked for a man among them, among who? The priest, the prophet, the prince, and the people, and he found none. Because they needed the mercy themselves. God is looking for someone who can pray, who will intervene for his mercy in these last days. Look at what Isaiah 59, 16 says. It says, and he saw my Yaramoshe, that there was no man and he wondered that there was no intercessor. May that never be said of Hope International. May that not be said of anyone sitting here at the sound of my voice. But instead of asking the question, God, is it me you're looking for? You will turn it around and say, here. Is there no one who will call upon the name of the Lord? Hosea 7 says, none among them calls upon me. Psalm 14 2 says, the Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there was anyone who understand, anyone who seek God. Church, it is time to break up your fallow ground. Hosea 10, 12 says, it is time to break up your follow ground. Everybody say follow ground. Follow. Yeah. follow ground. Listen to this carefully. Because sometimes we think follow ground is just hard ground, but it's ground that had been cultivated before. Yep. Yep. Follow ground. Cultivated land. But it was left to lie idle during the growing season. So though the land was cultivated, though it was plowed up, nothing was planted in it. And when the time of harvesting came, there was nothing to show. It's time to break up the fallow ground, which other means uh, simply this, you have to re refork it up, right? You got to refork it up, right? Come on, because the top crust part of it uh, gets a little hard and dry. Uh, nothing was planted there, and if nothing is planted there, then it didn't receive the rain and the nutrients for it to grow. In the time of, and we're still in it, so we're not really out of it. Probably never will be, but I don't know. But during the time when churches were shut down and still. Many churches haven't opened that yet. Still, some never even reopened. They end up selling the church. And even in different parts of the world, people are being persecuted for having a service. But during the time of the pandemic, and even to today, there is still a separation of wheat and tears. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. The Bible says those who are holy, let them be holy still. Yes, yes. Those who are just, let them be just still. Yes. Today you still have a chance. Okay. You still have an opportunity. Somebody has 
Come on, Holy Ghost. It is time to break up your fallen ground and plant the seeds of God's word. Because some people who were planting during the pandemic, uh, we can see even in the natural that they have been growing during the dry season. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. Amen. Plant the seeds of intercessory prayer. The Bible says, call upon me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that you don't know. God is waiting for somebody to call upon him. If you don't pray, there cannot be an answer. Amen. Amen. When God looked for a man to avert judgment, he found Abraham. Genesis 18.23, Abraham interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah and he reasoned with God to spear Sodom and Gomorrah. He went down from 50 righteous to 10 righteous and that was the final, final bargaining chip and God says, okay, if I can find him. But you know, before he even bargained with God, God said, can I keep this thing from my servant Abraham. I can't keep it from him. He's a righteous man. He's my friend. He will agree with me. If I share it with him, he might, he might ask me to spear Sodom and Gomorrah. And that's exactly what Abraham did. In our Wednesday night round table Bible talk, spend the first 20, 30 minutes in prayer. And then we get into the word. And we have prayed some of these prayers that Abraham prayed. Amen, 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 amen. And we have come to recognize that really and truly, this book is a book of intercessory prayer. Amen, amen, amen. Because we understand that God also found Moses. Yep. Moses was more than just a deliverer. To my amazement, and I have been saved some good 30-something years or more. I don't know. Can't do the math right now. I've always seen Moses as the deliverer who brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. But I understand more than ever before that Moses' role of being a deliverer was minor. His role as an intercessor was the greatest assignment that he had. Hallelujah. He was more than a, a deliverer. He is like Jesus. Yep. Yep. He is a type of Jesus. Jesus delivered us from the law of sin and death. But right now, his longest and greatest assignment is to be seated on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me. For you and me, and he hasn't stopped yet. My God, my God, everyone, everybody he, 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 he delivered, everybody he prayed for, they mumbled against him, he kept on praying, they complained, when he brought us out here, send us back to Egypt, we had better food, he kept on praying, they criticized him. Moses kept on praying. They despised him. Moses kept on praying. Family members stabbed him in the back. And he turned around and prayed for them. They angered God. God brought leprosy upon his sister Miriam. And Moses interceded for her. When God wanted to destroy his own people, Moses prayed and said, if you will only forgive their sin, if you will not if, if you won't forgive their sin, then strike me out of your book. He said that. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes. Take me out. That is standing in the gap. My God. Let's be truthful. Amen. Some of us have some family members we've been praying for a long, long time. Yes. Are we tired? Yes. Yes. We don't see nothing happening. As a matter of fact, they get worse. They talk about you worse. They stab you in your back a couple more times. Are you hearing me this morning? But Moses said, if you don't forgive them, do not put my name out of your book. Amen. 
right. I've been gotten there yet. I would still pray, but I'm not so sure I want him to block out my name. Come on! Come on! Come on! If you forgive your sins, if you will not strike me out of your book that you have written, charge that is standing in the gap. Why God couldn't afford to find an intercessor in Ezekiel? Where were the godly men and women of his day? Israel was in the grip of sin and adultery as we are today. Everybody wants to be gender neutral, even the toy people. Coming out for Christmas, they have gender neutral toys. Listen, nobody going to confuse my child. Amen. Even those, 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 Pastor Sims and I were watching it on the news. The, 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 the um, they have those blocks. What do they call them? Legos. Legos. Creating pieces so people can make gender neutral stuff. For that, me go upside, cut up some wood in my child. Block it up over here. Are you hearing me, church? Who is standing in the gap? Come on. Who is standing in the gap? The devil is after our children and our children's children. Hallelujah. By the time our children grow up into the world, everything that we are opposing becomes normal for them. If we don't teach them the word or stand in the gap. Because in his day, in his day, in Ezekiel's day, the Bible says the princes were like wolves. These were the political leaders. They were ravishing the people for dishonest gain. God's name was being profaned. The priests were profaning the holy things of God. The prophets were speaking when God had not spoken. And they were profiteering the gospel. No one was living for God. The death of an intercessor is a callous heart. The death of an intercessor is when the intercessor becomes a partaker of their sins. Amen. 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 Bible says there was, there was none. And here was a sorrowful conclusion of the whole matter. Verse 31. Judgment was delivered. And the people perished. Didn't have to happen. Amen. Church, it doesn't have to happen. Amen. Not to your children. Amen. Not to your wayward cousin and uncle and auntie. It doesn't have to happen. God is looking for somebody to stand in the gap. Hallelujah. God is calling you to intercede, to be a repairer of the breach. Cause the repair the breach has been violated. It's a violation of the God's law to humble ourselves and to pray and to seek His face. God is looking. Watch this. In Daniel, Daniel stood in the gap. Right? He kept on praying. The Bible says, even when they threatened to throw him in the lion's den. Daniel did not stop praying. Amen. He was a man in the middle, risking his own life. Hallelujah. In Daniel chapter 9, the Bible said he prayed nine times. And of the nine times he prayed, he said these words, Lord, we have sinned. Yes. We are rebellious. We, we are shame-faced. Daniel never excluded himself from the equation. Yeah. Amen. 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 You see, true intercessors don't brag about their self-righteousness or even the righteousness of God that has been imputed unto them. True intercessors don't brag about the many prayers they've prayed, how long they have prayed, who they have prayed for, and when they pray. They identify themselves with the sins of their people. Why? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh. Amen. 
ain't praying, Lord, you see. I'm not like that over there. We never drink, we never smoke, we never cuss. Come on. Never fornicate either. I'm not like, I'm not like them over there. So you see them, take care of them. But when Daniel prayed, he said, Lord, we have sinned. We are rebellious. We are shame-faced. Mm. Identifying yourself with the sin of the people doesn't mean that you're saying you are sin. But you understand that it had not been for the grace of God on your life, you would have been still be where they are today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Need to stand in the gap for those yet to be delivered from the traps of the enemy in which they were in which we were also caught in at one time. We need to plead for mercy. It's costly to be an intercessor. Yes, it is. Amen. Yep. Amen. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Sacrifice. That's why a lot of people don't venture into it. Yep. They will just say, listen, our, our Father who art in heaven, I'll always be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want to make me to lie down. Check that off, I'm out. An intercessor is somebody who would stop and pray any time of the day because they heard something that reacted in their spirit and says, you ought to pray for that. Amen, 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 amen. I'm watching the news this morning. I said it as I came into the sanctuary. Most of you weren't here yet. And it was on the news this morning that 17 missionaries in Haiti have been kidnapped, including children who had just finished building an orphanage and were on the way to the airport. They were kidnapped. The bus got hijacked, and I just stopped there drinking my coffee, and I said, Lord, don't know where they are. I don't know who they are. But change the heart of those captors and cause them to be released in the name of Jesus. Or provide a way of escape. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Because an intercessor recognizes that they don't have to wait to go to a secret place or into their prayer closet. But because they carry the altar of God with them, they are, my God, a house of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you can go into Mason. Come on and be there talking to the cashier. And she starts saying, Lord, I've been having a bad day. And she starts telling you her troubles and her woes. And you said, Lord, let me pray for you. Oh, glory be to God. I remember one time I went to my, my oh, Lord, this was last year. And I was in Target. And I was standing there talking to the cashier. And she started to just pour out her heart. And I said, I want to pray for you. She said, I feel like I need you to pray for me. I said, but I'm going to pray right now. She said, give me two minutes. Let me take the next person. And then you can pray. And I said, don't worry. I won't pray too long. Come on, you gotta use common sense. Amen. 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 And I prayed for her. Yeah, yeah. Because an intercessor doesn't walk around with their head in the sky, speaking in tongues all the time. Amen. Because you're praying over a need. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Come on. So if somebody comes up to you with a situation or a problem, it means God is giving you an opportunity to stand in the gap for them. Come on. Amen. Oh, then go away. I was thinking it in my head. <laughs> God is looking for you to stand between the porch and the altar. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2 says, Blow the trumpet in Zion. Proclaim a fast. Call an assembly between the porch and the altar. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people. Amen. Yes, Lord. How many of us need to cry out this morning, Lord, spare my son, spare my daughter, spare I am a Moshe Korabai, spare my grandchildren, if that's you, why don't you open your mouth and cry out, Lord, spare my children. Spare my children. God is looking for you to intercede because he needs your permission. He needs your agreement to bring salvation and deliverance. Your prayer of intercession is important. It is valuable to God. It is so valuable to God that the angel in Revelation chapter 8 carried around a vial 
uh, an incense of prayers. And then, uh, and, 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 and John, the, the, the Isle of Patmos asked, uh, he said, what are those? He said, these are the prayers uh, of the saints. And the Bible says he took the prayers uh, and he put it on the altar of incense. Past prayers, present prayers, even future prayers. <laughs> Praying in advance yeah. on the altar. Yeah. Are you hearing me this morning? Your prayers are so important and valuable to God that when it reaches up into the throne room of God, he saves it even after he answered it. Amen. Amen. The Bible says we need to intercede. <laughs> intercede for your family. Intercede for your friends. Even the ones you have to drop because they wouldn't get together. They act together. Keep praying for them. Are you hearing me this morning? Intercede for your enemies. Yeah. They might just become your friends one day. Amen. Mm. Intercede for your community. Yeah. You know what's hard? When we can't intercede for our families, our hearts have become so full of bitterness and resentment towards them yeah. that we really, if we talk the truth, if God punish them, we'll say, all right, then get what they deserve. Come on. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Hey! Amen. No, it's got silent. Amen. Don't agree with me. Stay Amen. right there. No, we're there, we're there, we're there. Amen. I true. I true. And so sometimes before we become the deliverer in our family, we have to deal with our own bitterness and resentment and forgiveness. Yep. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Y'all cause Moses not to enter the promised land. You don't have that. You want that on your? Come on. Come on. Come on. The Bible says we're to pray without ceasing. Pray for your church. Church, we need to pray for one another. We need to pray for our country. We need to pray for our government. Hallelujah. We need to pray without ceasing. We need to pray with all kinds of prayers and supplications in the spirit. We need to pray the word of God. We need to reverse curses and overthrow plans of the enemy. You have the power to disrupt demonic alliances. You have the power to disrupt demonic plans and intentions and provocations. You have the authority in prayer to tear down and build up. Keep praying. Even when you can't see any change. Even when things seem to get worse. God is merciful. Because he has Jesus as your forever high priest. Constantly. 24-7. 365 days a year. Still making prayer and intercession for you. God, is it me you're looking for? Come on, ask him one more time. Say, God, I want to answer on God's behalf this morning. Yes. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. I'm looking for you. It's you. I'm looking for it's you. It's you. I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking for you. But can I find you? Are you ready for this assignment? Is it you? Yes, it's you. It's you. Amen. Put your hand on your heart and say, Lord, it's me. You're looking for me. Thank you, Lord. Here is the thing. Thank you, Lord. He can be looking for you. Are you willing? 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 
to stand in the gap for that drunken uncle because it's everybody from here to Timbuktu. Come on. Come on. Are you willing to pray for those who really hurt you? Who spoken evil against you? Who cuss you in your face? Who tell you no good? Who tell you they don't want to see you again? Are you willing to pray? In the gap, stand in the gap for them? God is calling them to God has a plan for their life too. Some people prayed some prayers. Sister Jennifer, they never saw it answered and they died. But God answered it after they left. Because even while they were in the throes of death, they never stopped praying. Stop praying. We can't stop. We shouldn't stop. Somebody's eternal destination might depend on your prayer. Hallelujah. He intercedes for me, protects me from things. Unseen, right between God and me, He intercedes for me. And if He intercedes for me, I can't do nothing less than intercede for the next person. He intercedes for me, protects me from things unseen, right between. God and me, He intercedes for me. He intercedes for me, protect me from things unseen, right between God and me. He intercedes for me. Father, we thank you for your word today. Your word, they are spirit and they are life. You have spoken. We have heard your voice. And we thank you for reminding us that we need to stay on the altar on the altar of prayer father my prayer today is that each and every one of us will make up our minds to become a house of prayer and that we will not cease praying for one another so this day God as we have heard your word and you have sanctioned that you are looking for us. You are searching for us. As an intercessor to stand in the gap for this country, for your people, for our families, our communities, and even for the health of our brothers and sisters. We ask God that when we pray, you will not only hear, but you will forgive and you will heal. In Jesus' name.